Hello. Hello. Oh, yes, magnificent. Thank you. We're underway. How fantastic. Um, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, friends, partners, how absolutely wonderful to welcome you all here to the British Library. I'm Roly Keating. It's my daily, hourly, minute-by-minute -minute privilege to be chief executive here at the BL, and it is a delight to welcome you and, I think, friends and viewers streaming online, of course, um, to the, sorry, the 10th edition of JLF in London. And I'm... Oh, uh, and uh, equally proud to be able to say this is now, I think, the seventh version of JLF we have hosted here at the British Library. And... Um, some of you may have been here last year, and if you were, you will know I am especially pleased and relieved that we are sitting in this wonderful theatre, because at exactly this time a year ago, a fire alarm went off, uh, and more brilliant JLF improvisation had to take place in about 45 minutes than I have ever seen. <laughs> All was well. Um, so, uh, it's a very special year for us, by the way. Tenth birthday, of course, for JLF in London. It's also, the, next month, the 50th anniversary of the British Library itself. We began operation... Oh, thank you. We, we began, you know, huge, after years of planning, bringing together historic institutions into one new entity uh, in the summer of 1973, uh, the British Library got going, began its operations as the National Library of the United Kingdom, and we couldn't be uh, more delighted at the journey we've been on so far. And then two weeks ago, we announced our new strategy to take us through to the end of the decade um, called Knowledge Matters. Um, quite assertive, because we believe in this moment of disinformation and complexity, actually libraries and the serious pursuit of knowledge are needed more than ever. And when we published that, we reaffirmed some of our lasting purposes, including our, our cultural purposes to engage everyone with memorable cultural experiences, our international purpose to work with partners around the world to advance knowledge and mutual understanding. And you'll understand, I think, why JLF is therefore so important to us and such a precious and valuable relationship. And when we published our new strategy, I should say that we reaffirmed our commitment to in continue to engage and focus um, on everything to do with the culture, history, literature, and imagination of South Asia. Um, the links, of course, between the UK and the region are deep, rich, flourishing, endlessly complex, uh, and fascinating. We will never, ever run out of topics to discuss and explore. And of course, here at the British Library, we are proud and we feel the great responsibility of looking after possibly certainly one of the greatest and most significant collections of South Asian literature and heritage uh, outside the subcontinent itself. And we work tirelessly to find new ways through digitization, conversation, encounter, scholarship, to share those collections with as many people as possible. And so we could not be more proud to have weekends and events like this, um, where we're going to range widely, but frequently inspired by the collections we hold. And Sanjoy, Namita, Willie, once again, I've seen the program you've put together. What a set of treats we have in store for us. Especially proud, by the way, to see a couple of our board members, Venki Ramakrishnan and Tom Holland, on the program, Peter Frankopan from our advisory council, and other remarkable, distinguished uh, voices you're going to be hearing. So I hope between this theatre, the tents on the piazza, and the front hall, you'll be able to find a route through the festival, um, and no one will get to hear and see everything. That's the frustration. But I hope you enjoy everything that you do. Um, uh, I just want to, there'll be many thanks to be given, but I do just want to express a word, special word of thanks to uh, the Kasuma Trust, who've become a great supporter of the library over recent years. And um, thank you, Soma Pajari and the other trustees, for your commitment also to support this festival happening here. It really, really makes a difference. But look, without further ado, we have a packed evening ahead of us. I am going to pause there and hand the stage to none other than Sanjoy Roy. Sanjoy, please, thank you.
Can I ask Sharupa to give a small token of our appreciation to Roly Keating and the British Library, Sharupa. So Roly Keating, Excellency, the High Commissioner of India, uh, the Deputy High Commissioner, Amish Shashi Tharoor, on behalf of Namita Gokhale, William Dalrymple, and all my colleagues at Team Work Arts, welcome back to the 10th edition of GLF in London. Yes, it is. Uh, the fact that we had even one edition is quite a surprise. The fact that we've continued to last for 10 years is, is truly quite magical. When we began the Jaipur Literature Festival 17 or 18 years ago, I can't remember exactly when, who would have thought ever that we would get to this point that we had nine different editions outside of the main Jaipur Literature to be seen as amongst the biggest festivals or the largest festivals in the world, uh, not just looking at people who come on the ground, which is used to be about half a million pre-pandemic, and then this year when we've come back to normal, was a couple of hundred thousand. But more importantly, what the pandemic taught us in lockdown was that we could go online and create a really wonderful digital program. Uh, in 2020, when the lockdown, 2020, yeah, in the, when the lockdown happened, we pretty quickly got up and online with JLF Words Our Bridges and JLF's Brave New World. Namita's whole idea was, let's look at the world differently. Let's look at it as a place where knowledge can be shared, where innovations can be acknowledged, and where people can come together to collaborate and look at how to tackle uh, corona and COVID, which they did. What we didn't realize was that there was this huge audience waiting uh, to devour everything that we put online. We did so in the beginning from our homes, not really sure who was watching. But a couple of weeks later, Preeta, our colleague who heads up, the president of marketing, et cetera, came and said over a million people had already watched the sessions online. And in the first six weeks, or in the first season, we had about four and a half million people who watched a JLF somewhere, somewhere in the world. In 2023, in, in January, when we did this year's uh, festival, we had over 22 million people watching at an average watch time of 10 minutes, 48 seconds. And we are not general entertainment channel. We're a knowledge extension. So that's been amazing to see how many people devoured what we had. And these were not necessarily people from only the Commonwealth countries, which we are used to, especially here in the UK or in India. Uh, while number one and number two were still the United States and the United Kingdoms, number three and number four were people watching from China and Germany. And number five was Indonesia, number six was Uzbekistan. We have no idea why, don't even ask me. <laughs> uh, number nine was Saudi Arabia and 10 was Japan. So places where we had no access to earlier, where we never spent a dollar marketing and where we never had uh, people coming physically to the festival. So it's really this new community that we're looking at providing information of bringing the world together. And as Roly Keating said, really pushing the boundaries, ensuring that knowledge is accessible to everybody. And through knowledge, we push back on this whole sense of ignorance or the sense of disinformation that we see on the WhatsApp community that I saw today, sort of vile information, some people attacking Shashi for some God knows what reason, yet again. <laughs> Uh, so he sort of is the magnet that we go to when we hate something. Everybody loves to hate him for some reason or the other. But we love him, and we love him because he has that sense of information and considered knowledge, and he does his research, and he puts out a perspective. Now, you can love a perspective, or you can hate a perspective. You can be left of center, or right of center, or center of center. It doesn't matter. We are not here to represent A point of view or B point of view. We are here to provide you perspectives. And it's for you, our audiences, to go away and ponder and consider what these mean. And if you wish to buy into a particular idea, please do so. Because evolution can only happen if you listen to those people who you don't necessarily agree with. And that's what the Jaipal Richard Festival and JLF is all about. We're absolutely delighted. The last week, we created the first JLF in a non-English speaking place. So we were 
GLF Spain, which was our first extension into the Spanish-speaking world, and it was absolutely amazing, with thousands of people coming up for the evening programs. And it was, it was really, for us, very important to do this because we've never had any kind of access into the Latin-speaking world. And we hope this will continue uh, in some way to be able to allow us access to writers who we don't necessarily only see in the New York Times or The Guardian or The Times Literary Supplement. Having said that, what better way to partner than with the British Library? Seven years ago, we met, as we should, over a gin and tonic at the then <laughs> High Commissioner's residence, uh, Ambassador High Commissioner Naftej Sarna, and we decided to jump into bed together, untested. But that jumping into bed has been very, very useful, very successful, and we're delighted that seven years later, we still are wedded to each other, pretty much in the way that Amish has just decided to get married. <laughs> Congratulations to both of you. And, uh, so, and for that, because you all have clapped, he's now going to throw us all a wonderful reception <laughs> and give us the champagne to offer. Because what I did tell Amish when he, when he came in and I said, congratulations, I said, but this doesn't count. Where's the party? We all love a good party. So after this, we look forward to receiving you downstairs for the reception. Once again, on behalf of all my colleagues, Roly, thank you so much for everything. To Jamie, to Conrad, to John, to B, to all our colleagues at the British Library. Really, we really truly appreciate the kind of effort you all make to put this together. So thank you so much, and we hope you all will have a wonderful festival. As Roly said, you may not get into everything that you wish to, and we apologize in advance for that, but we promise you that it's online. And for those of you who have been messaging me about your relatives or a friend wanting to come in, many apologies, we are sold out. Uh, I'm not sure whether there are returns. If there are, of course, they'll be available. We'll ensure that everybody who comes to the door will try and find a way uh, to get you in, but it is sold out for now. But you can watch it online. So do log on and watch the programs, and even if you don't do it in the first week, do it thereafter at your own time. Ladies and gentlemen, to tell you a little bit about the program, please welcome festival co-director, Namitha Gokhale. Dear friends, lovers of books, we are honored and delighted to return to London in collaboration with the British Library to present the 10th edition, 10 years, we've all aged, some of us have grown younger, like Sanjoy, he, he has reverse aging process, uh, in what is truly the city of literature. Our narratives define us. These narratives are changing as are the parameters of the voice and technology that determine them. Who will tell our stories? Will they arise from the collective subconscious of our species or from the control and potential bias of artificial intelligence? GLF, the British Library, looks at the different dimensions and perspectives of our shared stories. We look at how these stories travel and transform and renew themselves. In the next two days, in fact, right now, as we proceed with the evening, we will have Shashi Tharoor and Amish Tripathi talk about myth and memory and the foundational epics of the Ramayana and the Mahabharat, which have shaped the imagination uh, and the politics and the, the ethical structure, indeed, of the Indian subcontinent. We talk of the Shakespeare Wallas, of Agatha Christie in Bollywood, of the continuing Indian fascination with P.G. Wodehouse, including Shashi Tharoor's, <laughs> of uh, American Indian dystopian fiction, um, speculative fiction about the, some of the issues which I talked about that face us wherever we go these days. And of course, writing from India's Northeast, which is the first time we are presenting that, but which we will do regularly in the years to come. We have letters to a writer of color and present other diasporic and hyphenated voices. We rediscover the work of the British Indian novelist Kamla Markande 
and present contemporary writing from Northern Ireland from some dear friends who have been with us before at Jaipur. Hannah Rothschild takes us to the world of high art and high finance with her new novel. And then, of course, we have Bollywood. How can we not? We have food and we have music. We have mathematics and the music of the primes with Marcus du Sautoy. Shashi Tharoor discusses his new book on Dr. Ambedkar. A panel discusses kings and constitutions. We speak of the front lines and the case for nature. We celebrate libraries and the fundamental freedom to read. Nobel laureate Sir Wenke and poet Alice Oswald decode the core of creativity. We conclude with Skyfall in a sari with the beloved music maker Usha Otho. We are each other's stories. In 2013, at the Jaipur Literature Festival in Jaipur, the great Indian writer Mahashweta Devi said, the freedom to dream must be the first and the most important <coughs> fundamental freedom. And that, I believe, is true, that we need our dreams and we need to have the right to dream. So for a weekend of dreaming and some nightmares, perhaps, <laughs> uh, we see you over this exciting weekend ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Namita Gokhale. We are each other's dreams. It's always wonderful to have the High Commissioner here with us at the opening, but even better when it's a High Commissioner who loves the arts and has been supporting the arts forever. Ladies and gentlemen, High Commissioner, His Excellency Vikram Doraiswamy. I have a lengthy speech of about six pages. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, thank you very much, Sean Joy, for the, for the introduction. Thank you, Namita, for being here. Thank you, Sir Roli Keating, for your friendship and your hospitality. Thank you, uh, the Right Honorable Shashi Tharoor, Member of Parliament. And of course, uh, thank you very much indeed, Amish Tripathi, our very own Nehru Center Director. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and of course, the redoubtable Usha <laughs> Everybody. So, friends, friends of the JLF and the British Library, ladies and gentlemen, friends, especially those who I'm yet to be able to call friends, thank you for being here at this spectacular building for the start of yet another exciting edition of JLF in London. I am not sure whether I should be grateful to Sean Joy for sharing that somewhat disturbing uh, image of him and Roly leaping into bed at the High Commissioner's <laughs> residence. I uh, have a terrible feeling my wife and I will need to change the sheets when we go home. <laughs> but thank you for sharing that history and thank you for your hospitality for the uh, JLF, for the uh, Literary Festival these past 10 years in London. Absolutely spectacular. I think it is, there are two ways in which you could look at this. One is that bringing a literary festival uh, to the library, this, particularly this magnificent library, is the most appropriate symbol and the most appropriate venue for such a partnership. The other, of course, is that this is a bit of an arrogance and it's a bit like bringing coals to Newcastle. Be that as it may, let us take the high road and assume that this is all part of a grand plan of celebrating the arts and authors. And even if some of you may have come here purely with the spirit of scientific inquiry, to, to, wonder, to answer the question of how authors got that way. <laughs> but the reality is, of course, that the JLF is a pretty spectacular institution in its own right. It has always been the go-to institution to be emulated in India, and there's a reason why we now have such a surplus of literary festivals. Everything is, as they say, uh, the most um, sincere form of flattery is imitation. So imitation of JLF is now very much the norm. Its vision, its inner spark has always been to bring about the widest range of authors and speakers together for the best possible celebration 
of the world of letters. It is an institution in itself if it is not a mixing of metaphors to say an event is an institution. To adapt what Bertrand Russell said about books to the JLF, there are two motives for attending a literary festival. One, that you might enjoy it, and the other, that you can boast about it. <laughs> While I leave it to each of us and our own conscience to figure out which kind of person each of us is, and if you're wondering, yes, that's right about me, <laughs> let me just say it's both right and fitting that the world's largest literary festival, born in the world's most populous country, with the world's largest diversity of languages, and en passant, one of the world's largest English-speaking populations, should mirror its own festival of words, ideas, and creativity in an institution that celebrates all of these things here in the UK, i.e. the British Library. Indeed, if it isn't cheeky to say, this is a most appropriate venue. After all, the British Library is not only one of the world's largest repository of ideas and words, but it has, shall I say tactfully, the world's most diverse range of cultures and countries from where these have, again, shall I say, euphemistically been sourced. <laughs> but more seriously, folks, at an event of this scale and quality, this is about the best tonic you need after a long and damp winter and an uncertain spring. Let us go so far in tempting fate, and at this point, with the cricket match being where it is, I really want to tempt fate. <laughs> by saying the weather has been excellent, almost Indian in the cloudlessness of its sky, perfect weather to be here in this great city with a great selection of idea makers to listen to as they ideate, a terribly bastardized word, but you get my drift, for a new and increasingly uncertain world. And of course, for those among my consular flock, i.e. Indian citizens who are here enjoying this all too brief summer in London, encouraged by P.G. Woodhouse's advice and carry on Jeeves, when he said, what's the use of having a great city uh, have a great city having temptations if fellows don't yield to them. <laughs> Remember, the quality of mercy at courts in summertime recess is definitely more strained than you might imagine. <laughs> so please don't do anything that my Deputy High Commissioner and I might have to require our long-suffering colleagues to have to bail you out on a weekend. <laughs> have a great JLF weekend at this great institution, and please do all you can to support and celebrate this magnificent repository of ideas, both the event and the institution. And now I presume I should yield space literally and metaphorically for the reception and before that the conversation that Amish and none other than the absolutely unique Mr. Shashi Tharoor will have thereafter for the, rece the reception bit that I believe Amish is going to throw us. <laughs> and, no, more seriously that, that team works and an uncertain and unnamed, <laughs> and unnamed sponsors are assisting you with to prove or disprove the proposition that alcohol is a vitamin. Thank you very much. May I request Ankur to just a big thank you to the High Commission for also co-hosting this evening's re reception. Thank you very much, Vikram Dorai Swami. And I do hope that Sangeeta is going to join us at some point. I still don't. Sangeeta, where are you? You're standing. Come, come down. Please, there's place here. She didn't arrive late. This event started early. <laughs> Sangeeta, come down. This year, this year, we lost two great authors, and we wanted to start uh, the festival acknowledging both their contributions uh, to writing, to literature, and their support to JLF. Martin Amos passed away earlier this year, as did Patrick French, and we take this opportunity to thank them for the legacy that they will continue to pass on through their books and through the literature. Thank you all so much. Uncle, over to you.